Technology, isn't it a wonderful thing? All right, how's everybody doing today? Everybody feel good after lunch? Okay, good. So my name is uh, Jim Gante, and I have the distinct pleasure of leading a combination of our HPC, our engineered solutions, and also our cloud teams. That's very important because what you're going to hear and see is basically what Dell is doing when it comes to those three areas, and more importantly, how we want to work with all of you in terms of taking that differentiation and helping accelerate all of the really great work this community has been doing overall. So as I uh, was thinking about this and talking to my staff, we were just sitting there kind of smiling because there is really no better time to be in the HPC space. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the news items that are popping out right now, this really is the best possible time. And I think everybody in the room has, has either heard or seen how the uh, NSCI imperative has come out. And so it's not just a question of us collectively believing that this is good. Even people who have not been in the industry are now starting to understand that HPC can not only be vital to our nation's interests, but we want to use it to spur uh, not only the creation and deployment of computing technology, but we want to help advance. We want to take some of the economic competitiveness. We want to take some of the scientific discovery and also utilize that uh, capabilities in terms of what's happening at the national security level. So if you think about the themes, the themes are pretty much the same things that we deal with every day, except at a much higher level and a higher visibility scale. How do we create systems? I can tell you in my 25 some odd years in the industry, and I've actually grown up through the consumer consumer, the enterprise, and to some extent, even some of the services side, the ability to create systems. No longer do people come in and say, hey, can you tell me what the best components are? They come in and say, look, I really want to get this thing stood up. I really have advancements I need to go do. How can Dell help me go do that? Making sure that we in the US stay at the forefront of some of these capabilities, making sure that the developer productivity remains high, and making one of the things that you know, we at Dell pride ourselves on, and you'll hear the term disruptive, democratize, but how do we take HPC that has traditionally been the realm of academia, the realm of government, and really make that available to the next person working on the breakthrough innovation that might actually be needing the capabilities to do that in their garage? And then ensure that everything that we do not only works with today's technologies, but it works for those future HPC systems. But it's not just about government. One of the things we're seeing is, is that HPC is becoming an imperative for research, for industry, and for the security area. I think all of us know and can probably memorize uh, the T500 chart. The good news is a lot of those opportunities are here in the United States. The better news is this is now a global phenomenon. This is now a global need. And I know most of you have conversations with the various supercomputing centers around the world. But the bottom line is there's huge opportunities for HPC in other areas and in other possible industry verticals. But it doesn't just stop there. Take a look at the top 10 list. On that top 10 list, you'll notice that most of them aren't even in the US. Yeah, there's a few that are, that are with us. Number three is there, along with obviously one that's very near and dear to my heart. I also get a lot of a, uh, what I refer to as, I didn't know you did that. A lot of folks, when they think of Dell, don't think of us from an HPC perspective. For those of you in the room, we actually power the number eight fastest supercomputer on the planet, by the way, also located in my uh, hometown of Austin, Texas. So the beauty is it's no longer just a federal, national, presidential level requirement. HPC has become mainstream. HPC is something that is available around the world. And more importantly, if you look at even some of the top 10 systems, those themes, those requirements are things that you're going to see happen over and over again. But I also get, because part of my title is general manager, I also get the question of, well, Jim, you know, HPC is nice, but traditionally we don't think of that as a really good business for Dell. Wrong. As a matter of fact, if you look at, and this is actually a cascade, thank you to our friends from IDC, I'm using your data. Um, the net is that if you look at what's happening in terms of HPC from a business perspective, look at the Kagers on your left. If you look at storage, if you look at what's happening in the server space, these are areas that are growing at almost double digits. These are areas that are ripe in terms of the capabilities and the business requirements. But if you double click beyond the overarching addressable market, take a look at what's happening in terms of hardware. Um, the good news is, yeah, supercomputer is growing. The better news is, if you look at the gross margins in the divisional and departmental, that's actually really, really good business. And that's where Dell tends to pride itself on. But one of the key takeaways, or two key takeaways here, is you're going to hear the theme over and over again, 
HPC is starting to mainstream. When I say starting to mainstream, the great work that everybody in this room is doing is now starting to make its way into basic inventors, basic companies. It's no longer seen as truly just the HPC space, but folks that are working on the next class of innovation, the next class of uh, change. And then one that uh, obviously we tend to smile at, especially since we become a private company, is look what's happening in terms of how much HPC and compute is changing the industry. One out of four by 2018 HPC powered platforms will be uh, compute oriented or compute based. Think of that, one out of four. And so when you think about us as a private company, when you think about our economies of scale, the depth and breadth of our portfolio, that's not only great for us, that's actually great for all of you because you'll be able to take advantage of that purchasing power, that economies of scale, the global reach, the global services, and the global support. I'm going to go through the entire list. Yes, I'm a degreed engineer, but I'm not going to walk you through all of the technologies. The key takeaway here is, is that you can see that we want to go after solving some of the biggest, hairiest, we call them BHAG problems, uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're solving some of the biggest and most important challenges. And you can see what some of them are. I mean, case in point, the fact that frequency, I was smiling at the gentleman who said, you know, stop thinking about flops. I remember the days where everything was about, you know, what the uh, hertz on the processor were. So as frequency starting to flatten and we're moving more to multi-core, everyone's going to start looking at parallelism. As the industry is now starting to look at the mainstreaming piece, how do we take the global exascale race and turn that into innovations for performance? for power, for networking, and all the other subsystems are going to have to be there. And then again, one that's very near and dear to my heart, which is the whole HPDA space or the high performance data analytics. How can we create new opportunities for HPC? How can we take some of that great innovation and not only make it more growth, but make it more innovative? And then as you can see from the technology, and I'll pick on a couple because I saw some uh, friends from our great partner Intel here. The things that we're starting to do with uh, processing, the things we're starting to do from an interconnect perspective, Perspective. The things that we're starting to do together from a storage perspective on the Intel side, and then all the other partners, these are capabilities that as we start to accelerate this, we are going to be able to not only fundamentally change the game, but accelerate the way that folks not only look at HPCs, but the kind of uh, differentiation and inventiveness that we'll be able to collectively drive. So. Here's one of the parts that we find really interesting, and I have the pleasure of probably going through, uh, let's see, as low as four to five, maybe as high as 10 C-suite conversations every week in our briefing centers when I'm not traveling. And here's some of the things that I'm starting to hear over and over again. The first one is, is that folks are no longer coming in and saying, hey, I'd like to see your individual roadmaps for compute, for storage, for networking, for management, and for file systems. What I'm starting to get more and more of is, hey, Jim, can you help me with integrated, scalable systems? That's really a translation for they want to get to time to value. They want to get to time to innovation. They don't want to take the tactic of buy all these components, assemble them themselves. That's a place where we can definitely help them. The other thing that we're starting to hear more and more of is a lot of C-suite executives are starting to understand, I have all this computational firepower on my HPC piece. I've got all of this data and information. Wouldn't it be great if you could help me target that so I could become more competitive? I could become more agile. I could become more flexible. That's exactly what we're starting to do. So you're going to start to see and hear how we're taking a lot of our HPC innovations and now only starting to target that at big data. But equally as important, what are we starting to do with cloud? If you're not having a conversation with your customers or your partners about cloud, I can guarantee you your competitors are. It is becoming not only part of every conversation we're in, it's actually becoming in some cases a requirement. And I'll give you a perfect example of another Dell did you know. Um, case in point, just to give you a real world life sciences example. How many folks in here actually knew that Dell had nine billion, that's billion, not million, images sitting on our cloud clinical archive? Imagine what you could do if you took the computational firepower that we have in the room, focus that on a particular type of disease, focus that on a particular type of genomics work, focus that on a particular type of health and life sciences problem. Now you can start to see what I'm talking about in terms of fundamentally not only changing the industry, but utilizing some of this differentiation to go do that. So where are we headed? 
We're looking to create the most comprehensive, the most capable, and the most cost-effective HPC solutions so all of you in this room can not only take advantage of it, but can go drive the level of innovation and inventiveness that we're looking to go do. So if I were to take everything I just said, here's the market, here's the industry, here's our belief, here's what we're hearing from customers, I would summarize where, where we're headed in a very simple vision statement. And the Dell HPC vision s s statement is very simple. We want to provide a comprehensive, complete portfolio, yes. We want to disrupt and democratize, of course, it's in our DNA. But more importantly, we want to help more people in industry, research, government and education, use HPC solutions to drive more innovations and discoveries than any other HPC systems vendor on the planet. And the way we're going to pull that off is because we're doing things that are in our DNA. As a matter of fact, that's nice from a vision statement perspective, but the nice thing about this vision statement perspective is that it's grounded in reality. Our past actually is a prologue to where we want to go. Because a lot of folks don't realize that in the HPC space, we actually do have a position of leadership. And I'm not using this as a chest thumping uh, statement. That's not the case. But a lot of folks tend to forget that we were one of the first ones to help transition the clusters in the late 90s. A lot of folks don't remember that we were one of the first ones in terms of making sure that both innovation and showcase uh, projects are out there. And you see some of the names. Most of you know all of those names. And unfortunately for my IDC friends, there is a, another vendor out there who tracks um, ratings. And depending on who you believe, uh, they've actually told us that if we're not number one, we're in a statistical tie for number one in terms of how we're doing from a compute perspective in HPC. So again, that vision statement is not something that's a nice you know, sheet of paper that hangs in the hallways of Round Rock 5 in Austin, Texas. That actually is a prologue based on what we've done in the past. But like everybody else in the industry, you can't stay still. In our industry, if you stand still, you get run over. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take those existing past leadership scenarios, we're going to take the wonderful partnerships that we've created with a lot of you, and we're going to move that into what we refer to as our HPC 2.0 strategy. That HPC 2.0 strategy is going to manifest itself in a couple of ways. The first one, and for those of you that have known me in different incarnations um, of my life, I tend to ask my teams to focus on things that are first, best, only, fastest, and a whole bunch of other different type of uh, innovative scenarios. So what you're going to see us focus on is not only on first, best, and only solutions, but we want to make sure that those solutions truly are integrated. Again, it's turning into time to innovation as opposed to uh, pride of assembly. We want to make sure that they're truly engineered solutions. Wouldn't it be great if you were able to have a particular problem, a particular workload, a particular item you're trying to solve, and know that you can buy a precision tuned platform that focuses primarily on that workload and is guaranteed to give you the best possible results. And then last but not least is making sure that as big data, as cloud come together, which are two other places that we have a good position, these are places we want to go take that innovation and be able to do that on your behalf. We also want to make sure that this happens at all scales. Yes, we have number eight, but you're all gonna, also going to see us focus on a lot of the T500. We've not done that in the past, but as the industry is moving to integrated, as the industry is moving to repeatable class offerings, you're going to start to see us do that level of innovation at all scales, and we're going to do it on uh, particular industry verticals. Most folks know that we've got a fairly decent business in terms of life sciences, we've got a great business in terms of government, and we do a really good job in terms of research. You're going to start to see the same things in manufacturing, in energy, and in finance. So if you haven't spoken to your Dell person recently, you probably should have a conversation, and I think Steve is in the back, you can probably raise your hand and uh, pull him aside since I have to run to the airport after this. But then we also want to make sure that the net is, it's not just about what we're doing. The reason why HPC, the reason why this community does what it does is because we do do things in partnership. And so what you're going to start to see us do is take, take some of those innovative partnerships, take some of those research partners, and use the collective brilliance of all of those teams to help accelerate, help drive, help deliver, help disrupt what we intend to do in the uh, HPC space. So the way we're going to pull that off is the fact of we've always had custom configurable 
cost-effective solutions. We've always had a really good portfolio of servers and storage, but now what we want to do is help you understand two things. The first one is that we want to make sure that you know that we're designing and delivering HPC optimized servers. You can see two examples of that in our 6320 and our 4130, but we also want to make sure you understand that we're doing solutions. And those solutions can be the example that you see here, a precision-tuned workload genomic data analytic platform. That's what it does for a living. That's the kind of results that it drives. The same thing you can see in terms of our G5 scale architecture, but it's not about just thinking at rack scale. We also want you to start thinking at pretty much manufacturing or to some extent modular data center scale. Some of the uh, upcoming T500 that you'll hear about aren't just things that we've done in terms of multiple rows and racks. It's things that we're doing at entire small mini data centers. So as you start to see our MDC and other containerized optimized solutions, that's the level of portfolio, that's the level of firepower that we're going to bring to bear on your behalf. But it doesn't just stop there. In order to really make this work, we're going to make sure that um, we enable you from a life cycle perspective. So we've got a lab with uh, a lot of folks that we're bringing in. That lab is 14,000 square feet. It exists to uh, merely make sure that everything that we do is best in class, and it's a growing team. So if you know folks who want to join an exciting organization, send them our way. And then equally as important, we just announced our DSS team. For the longest time, yes, we've had the pleasure, we were the very first to power some of the largest hyperscale providers on the planet. But what we're also hearing loud and clear is what we learned in hyperscale, other folks now want to take down into the next level. So for the next thousand levels of inventors or the next thousand inventors, we're going to create, we've created our DSS unit, recently launched about four or five weeks ago. Its entire mission in life is to take that parallel, high level, massively um, deployed type of innovation and now make that available in the HPC space. And so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that because I'm running out of time. But the net is, is that our plans, our vision, and our execution is really clear. We are going to help you collectively build some of the best HPC platforms and capabilities on the planet. We are going to use our global reach in terms of making sure that it's cost effective, it's feature optimized. And more importantly, we want to make sure that these optimized systems not only are going to address the things going on in terms of big data and cloud, but how do we utilize our size and scale and things like DSS to go do it. And then last but not least, you will see a dramatically different execution mentality when it comes to um, our field execution. How do we engage you as our customers and partners much earlier? How do we make sure that you've got the roadmaps and the things you need in terms of bidding? And then how do we make sure that we've got the right sales capabilities on a global level and utilize not just what we've done in terms of the compute, the server, the storage, and the networking, but things that are Dell unique, up to and including what we can do with our Dell financial services and our scale and grow. So in conclusion, um, think of this as a rolling thunder approach. I just gave you a little taste of what's out there. There's going to be a lot more coming up. You're going to hear about some of our new HPC hires. I was joking with Stephen that as I was sitting there, we just had another person accept. We're bringing some of the best and brightest on board on your behalf. We're going to have plenty of other positions in terms of what we want to go do. You heard a little about the technologies. You've heard about the products. And you're going to also hear about some of the new programs we're putting in place. So if you're going to SC15, which again is in my team's backyard, not only uh, are we looking forward to hosting you in Austin, but more importantly, we're looking forward to hosting you in Round Rock. Let us take you through the labs. Let us have you talk to some of our best and brightest. Let us have you talk to some of our PhDs and allow us to become your primary partner and to some extent your uh, primary, I guess we'll call it for lack of a better term, co-inventor on a lot of the types of research and things that you're executing. And with that, I will hand it back to you. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks.